Hey guys and welcome to Hadi Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about a very commonly known STD and that is the human papilloma virus, which is commonly known as HPV. So let's get started. So what is HPV? The human papilloma virus is the most commonly sexual transmitted disease today. In the majority of cases, the infection is harmless and will go away by itself, but in some types, the infection may lead to cancer or genital warts. So from this definition of HPV, we get that it's the most common sexually transmitted disease of today. And in most cases, the infection is harmless and will go away by itself and doesn't cause any severe or debilitating symptoms to the patient. But in some types of the HPV virus, patients may suffer from genital warts, which may actually lead to the development of cancer. So as we can see in this image on the right of my screen, this is actually what the genital warts look like. So in the male patients, it's actually found on the shaft of the penis, and in female patients, it can be found anywhere in the vagina, vulva, or cervix. And in patients who have anal sex, it may also be found around the anus. So this is basically what HPV is. So now let's take a closer look at the different types of HPV. So the human papilloma virus, or HPV, has over 200 variants, and only 40 kinds may infect the genital areas, which includes the vulva, the vagina, cervix, rectum, anus, penis, and scrotum, as well as the mouth and throat. Two specific types of HPV, called HPV 6 and 11, cause most cases of the genital warts, and types 16 and 18 are the lead causes of cancer cases worldwide. So there are four main types of HPV that actually cause very severe symptoms. So the first ones are 6 and 11, and they are actually responsible for the development of warts in the anal rectal region of the patient. So the cause of over 90% of the anogenital warts can be attributed to either HPV 6 or HPV 11. And then we have HPV 16 and 18. And these two types actually cause more than 75% of cervical cancer in females and over 50% of vaginal and vulva cancers in women. So something interesting about HPV is that even though we have over 200 kinds, only 40 kinds actually infect the genital areas. And the most severe ones are 6 and 11, which cause the warts in the anogenital regions, and 16 and 18, which go on to cause cancers in these patients. So another important thing to note is that HPV can cause throat and mouth cancers, penile cancers, anal cancers, vaginal cancers, and cervical cancers. So these are all areas that are actually sexually exposed areas, the mouth, the anal region, and as well as the penis and vagina. So how is the HPV infection spread? So one may contract HPV by direct skin-to-skin -skin contact with an infected individual, especially during vaginal, anal, or oral sex. This disease is most commonly spread during vaginal or anal sex. And an important point to remember is that HPV can be passed on to a partner even when the infected person has no signs or symptoms of the disease. So something very important to note is that even if patients are asymptomatic or don't actually have any noticeable warts or cancer-like lesions, that doesn't mean they don't have the disease or that their disease is not transmissible. So it's important to remember that this disease can be passed on even if the patient is asymptomatic. So now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of HPV. So because 90% or 9 out of 10 cases go away on their own within two years, the HPV infection usually doesn't cause any noticeable symptoms or health problems. In 10% of infected cases, the virus doesn't go away on its own, and this is when it can cause some serious health problems for the patient. This includes genital warts and warts and abnormal cell changes that, if left untreated, could develop into cancers, especially in the vulva, penis, anus, or throat regions. So the most common sign or symptom of HPV is actually the development of these genital warts, and over time they can actually become malignant and grow into cancer-like masses or lesions around the anogenital areas as well as in the throat or the mouth. So most patients are actually asymptomatic, but the main sign and symptom is that wart-like lesion in the various affected organs. The testing and diagnosis of HPV. So in women, a pap smear test is done to collect cells from the surface of the cervix or the vagina, and this sample is then sent to a lab and is tested for any cellular abnormalities that may lead to cancer. So here, a DNA test can also be used to evaluate for high-risk types of HPV. 
In some more severe cases, a biopsy of the abnormal lesion will be done to test for signs of malignancy. And currently, there's no test available for men to check for HPV, but the diagnosis is usually made based on visual inspection. So the physician will actually inspect the anogenital region and can actually note whether there's any wart-like lesions noticeable in a specific area. The treatment of HPV. So unfortunately, there is no treatment for the virus itself. However, there are several available treatments for the health complications that HPV may cause. So genital warts can be treated with prescription medications, burning them with an electrical current, or freezing them with liquid nitrogen. The precancerous lesions can be treated by freezing them, which is cryotherapy, by laser therapy, and by loop electrosurgical excision procedures, which are called LEAP, and these use electrically charged wires to remove these lesions. Other HPV-related cancers are currently treated with chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and surgery. And finally, let's briefly talk about the prevention of this disease and the HPV vaccine. So thankfully, there is an HPV vaccine which can help protect patients against certain types of HPV that can lead to cancer or genital warts. So remember again, we said those most common ones that actually lead to those genital warts or the development of cancers are actually 6, 11 and 16 and 18. So this vaccine can actually protect the patient against developing the disease. So the vaccine is commonly known by the brand name Gardasil 9 and is usually administered to girls and boys between the ages of 11 and 12. The vaccine is given in multiple doses or shots over 6 to 12 months and children aged 9 to 14 receive two doses and those 15 or older will receive three doses. So a little more about the HPV vaccine. It says it protects against the human papillomavirus strains which cause cervical cancer and it's actually 99% effective against its targets, which are the HPV type 6, 11, 16, and 18. And it's actually been introduced and offered to girls and boys in schools during 2019. And it's currently available from gum clinics for men who have sexual intercourse with other men. So men amongst the gay community. So this is actually very important in the prevention of this disease, because as we can see, this disease does cause quite debilitating symptoms for the patient. And of course, it's always better to prevent rather than to cure. So the HPV vaccine actually comes highly, highly recommended. And that brings us to the end of this video on HPV. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to turn in your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.